rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. And with those words, we start our next Digital Foundry live play video. And to talk about this co-op Half-Life 2 mod synergy, I'm joined by my colleague John Linneman. How you doing there, John? Pretty good, but I prefer to go by John Freeman. <laughs> And I'm also joined by Mr. Digital Foundry himself, Richard Ledbetter. How are you doing there, Richard? I'm very pleased to be here, Alex. Thanks for asking. Oh, of course. And uh, today we're going through Half-Life 2 co-op mod Synergy, playing through the first couple levels of games, maybe skipping around a bit, and kind of investigating how this co-op mod works and also how we're modifying it. That's right. Much like the week before this one, we're playing with Pascal Gishas or Marty McFly's ray tracing shader and a couple other shaders as well that we're going to talk about during the play. And we are already on the train in the City 17. You can see how excited we are here because we're like all running around and, you know. Yeah, I just cannot stop running. And John, you are in fact John Freeman if Excellent. you look at your character model. Good. Um, what do I look like? You're, uh, you're kind generic, of a generic lady number two. Yeah, I, you're one of the rebels that eventually dies. That's basically it. Okay. Um, we're all running very different oh. PCs to play this right now, That's right? right. Um, I'm running on a GTX 1060, Core i5 8400, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 2,667 megahertz, all on an SSD. And I, unlike the rest of my fellows, are, am not using ray tracing right now, rather standard MXAO, as it's called, which is a very good version of screen space ambient occlusion at the moment. Um, but you can see probably a difference looking at John's rig right now, how that looks. Um, what, what are you running there, John? Yeah, so as usual, I'm on the venerable i9-7900X with a GTX, sorry, RTX 2080 Ti, uh, 32 gigabytes of memory, and I am in fact running with ray tracing enabled and a bunch of other things that I'm sure we'll discuss shortly. But what about you, Richard? Uh, right, yes, I have Core i7 8700K clocked to 4.7 gigahertz, uh, which is, you know, obviously what you need for a game of this. <laughs> With this requirement <laughs> and um, uh, GPU wise um, because we're going to be talking about ray tracing and uh, because we haven't really done it before I'm going to be using Radeon 7 but right now I don't actually have ray tracing enabled so I have uh, got uh, 290 frames per second here but <laughs> let's turn it on and um, yes I'm down to 74 65 frames yeah. per second but, you know, when you sort of uh, you know, turn it on and off, you can kind of see that the, the lighting changes dramatically in terms of uh, particularly shade. But this is nothing compared to some of the stuff we've got lined up later on. That's so, right. Yeah, let's yeah. get out of this boring scene and move <laughs> on. I mean, just uh, uh, I'm also using some slight texture mods here to increase the resolution of some of these decals and stuff. Uh, because Half-Life 2 is aged pretty well in the art department, but its texture resolution its a bit uh, low. It's a bit low these days. Um, and this yeah. room should look pretty different on my rig versus John and Richard's. Like, for me, like when I look in this corner here, it's doing that typical AO thing where the points of intersection between geometry are darkened. And, you know, you would kind of expect that in real life to a certain degree, but it is not respecting actually the fact that light is hitting these areas or not. It's just actually shading ambiently, no matter what the, the environment looks like. That's right. Um, uh, where So in my case though, you might be noticing a little graphical artifact around the name display. When I look at you over here or Richard, uh, that's, yeah. due, that's due to one of the reflection settings I'm using. And maybe I should real quick note what I'm, what I'm running here to, to get <laughs> yeah. this, this different look here. So I'm bringing up um, uh, reshade here. And I'm using a little bit of sharpening. I'm using reflective bump mapping, which is different than the SSR feature. Uh, it's a lot more subtle. If you look down this tunnel, you can actually see how there is there is reflections happening on the floor. Uh, it's applied in a less extreme fashion. It doesn't seem to apply to every surface uh, equally somehow. Um, but that's what causes the glitch with the names. I'm also mm. using a few other like tints and some subtle changes to the color to change the look of the game ever so slightly, just to fit uh, my preference. <laughs> yeah, that's all about reshade, kind of making things to your own preference. Exactly. Uh, for me, I can turn on ray tracing, but we'll, we'll go right now through what I'm kind of running here settings-wise. Uh, 
very simply just FXAA, LumaSharpen, MXAO, and I, I'm double applying MXAO by accident. Good job, Alex. Uh, <laughs> um, but not running ray tracing because if I were to turn on ray tracing, which I can do right now, uh, this would be ray tracing plus MXAO using the same settings John and Richard are using. Uh, as I turned it on and the game freezes a bit, I dropped down to 20 FPS. Wow. <laughs> at 1080p. Um, it's brutal running the settings that it has right now. I'm going to turn off MXAO as well, uh, which will help a tiny bit. But yeah, no. Here, this, uh, this is, I, why don't you come over here to this pillar, guys? This is a nice, this is a good way to show how this, how this works with this. If you look at the pillar behind you over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously that pillar is... Uh, blocking light so to speak so yeah when you turn off rt here on this system it just looks completely flat there's zero shading here at all yeah you know wow. and, you know obviously some forms of uh ambient occlusion would would change this a bit but you know with ray tracing you get the very natural sort of fall off of the darkening effect behind that large yeah. pillar Wait, keep looking at it. I'm going to turn on uh, regular and ambient occlusion and see what that looks yeah, like. Yeah, see what this looks like. Okay, so John looking at the same thing I am at this pillar here. This is what it looks like, and this is his. I'm not seeing that same kind of dramatic bounce light onto the, you know, that like little stand behind the pillar, unlike what I presume you're seeing. I just kind of more see like a haloed outline where the geometry meets. Yeah, I'm uh, toggling it in real time here. So if you're watching my screen, you can see it flipping back and forth, the effect that it has, which is quite significant, especially in other areas of the game, but it really uh, <laughs> does add a lot of depth to the scene. Yeah, and the, another thing that you should be getting too is that this room has like a general kind of like, I guess yellow indirect yes, light in it, exactly. and I don't get any of that. I just it get looks like a dark more orangey, if you will. Yeah. Um, gosh, should we let's, continue though? Let's. Yeah. Let's what's go your find frame rate there, though, uh, John? Well, I am running it with VSync at 60 FPS. Okay. So right. my goal is always just to hit, uh, you know, a solid frame rate. Yeah. Specifically at what the video is designed to run at, because you know it just. It's going to look the smoothest. So I yeah. tweaked my settings to ensure that I don't drop below 60 FPS in normal gameplay, which, you know, when using RT is actually something you need to think about even on a powerful card like this. Yeah, see, like, the thing is, like, we're running 16 rays per pixels right now. Between all of us, each rig is set up to use 16 rays uh, per pixel. And when I have that on with the GDX 1060, it's 20 FPS. But if I were to turn that down, one second, let me turn it back on. Um, to say like, let's say three rays per pixel, uh, it becomes much more reasonable. Uh, let's see here, I'm getting now 60, ooh, 30 FPS or so, it's, it's not perfect. 50 or so, it depends. It, like when you move the screen around, uh, it increases the amount of rays being shot out to keep the image stable. And it's <laughs> it just kind of tanks the GTX 1060. It's it's I think I'm getting the, a problem with uh, double buffered VSync right now. Basically, it's not triple buffered. Yeah, I'm using uh, Radeon uh, Enhanced Sync, so mm -hmm. it does present like VSync, but you can see the frame rate goes above 60 frames per second. And I believe if I go below 60 frames per second, I'll get tearing. Yeah, um, uh, which is pretty good. I just uh, actually I had a huge. Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah, double buffering is not that great. I'm going to probably turn off RT on mine. <laughs> um, well, for, you know, we, we should probably move on to another area. How are you guys looking? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, another kind of... Ooh, I don't think mine's working right now. There we go. Uh, another funny thing that we've been kind of dancing around with while getting this to work, and this was a much more positive experience, by the way, than getting Crisis working uh, in co-op multiplayer with a mod in the year 2019. This mod has existed on Steam for quite a while now, and uh, it just works rather flawlessly. The yep. only pro problem we maybe might have had is figuring out the settings to broadcast the server either as local area network or internet. Oh, this, this scene is great, by the way. Um, there's so many cool little Half-Life 2 things that I just absolutely adore. Yeah, don't get uh, in the way of them. <laughs> so this is interesting. If you look at this table back here, yeah. the suitcase, there's a sort of a blue light up here that's casting down on the scene. Mm -hmm. You see to see it bounce off the table onto these boxes here. Ooh. I guess if you have RT off, you're not going to see it. 
Yeah. But it's a, it's a nice, uh, you know, it's just showing the bounce light in action there. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of pulsating for me though, which looks a bit odd. Is it really? Yeah, it it's like a, it's like it's got a, a huge internal sort of uh, light bulb in it that's sort of oh. diffusing through the. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Is it constantly <laughs> pulsing the the entire time? Um, only when I move. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you yeah. mean like uh, kind of like trails around it, maybe? Because it's that like does... a big glow, actually. Huh. Strange. Yeah. I hope it's working so, on your rig at least. <laughs> uh, that that gets me back to what I was saying. Basically, um, oh, so, look, this guy is very unhappy at me. Okay, look this at is this. fascinating. Real quick, look at this guy. He, he doesn't know who to focus on. Yeah, right. It's designed to focus on the player. And you mean Gordon you. Freeman, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He meant to focus on Gordon Freeman, but he's like changing his view to look at different players. So this oh, is now great. he's looking over here at, at Alex, and then he'll turn back to Richard and. It's a uh, oh no, he's, it's fascinating to watch. This is I still awesome. love these character models, by the way. This just looks great. Oh, I know, gosh, the 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 police combine are awesome looking. Um, so we we really should continue on yeah, here, yeah. I think. Yeah, but uh, the problem we were getting getting this working at all was the fact that Reshade is very smart. By the way, uh, it's so incredibly well designed. Uh, Crosssire, I think, is how you say the name, or Crosssire, or Croiser. Um who's designed reshade uh, from the ground up and it can pick the depth buffer that is required for um, reshade yeah. to eject a lot of its effects really well but with a game like half-life 2 that has a couple um, it's it, it sometimes has prob problems and so we've had it where like we enter a scene uh, and suddenly the depth buffer is off or it's switched to the wrong one so the effect isn't applying. But right now, it's all working. I'm using a dedicated uh, selection. Are you guys using auto or? Uh, I'm currently using auto, um, but occasionally it'll glitch out. It's certain, no, it's not there. Basically, if you're right, if it has issues selecting the correct depth buffer, you'll get sort of a flickering effect. Yeah, and this is what, uh, unlike what I said last week in last week's video with uh, Crisis, I accidentally selected the wrong preset there. This is what the depth buffer should look like. It's kind of just like a layer where you can see the objects of the world, like, reliefed against each other. It, yeah, uh, it's very dark, though, well. in this game right now, since the room is so small. If it was a bit larger, you could see a bit more. It's basically almost pitch black on my screen. No, it looks it looks amazing, actually, on my screen right now. Yeah, the are you using the, the AO and yeah, IO yeah, output? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can really just see, like, you can see the, the temporal artifacts as you move around, but it really looks somehow very stylized. And just seeing this sort of flat-shaded polygon look, if we were to add, like, take take this style with colored vertices oh my um, god you could you could recreate interstate 76 with ray tracing <laughs> or some kind of like super hot super hot with this yeah, exactly. would actually also look really good where it already has this kind of like white clinical aesthetic look it would be pretty so perfect i'm for hoping this doesn't too. destroy youtube but i really <laughs> like i'm playing for a little bit with this feature enabled because i do think it looks great yeah 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 uh, so this also shows a bit of Half-Life 2's kind of influence. Like the get, like if you compare this to like the start of, I don't know, Quake 2, or yes. like Half-Life had such a huge influence on game design. This we have to stack this box, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like there's no combat for the intro part of Half-Life or Half-Life 2, and that design is just pervasive ever since then. So uh, this is actually I'm in, I'm still showing the the um, IO A. I-L-A-O view, mm -hmm. and you can look in the window that we just jumped out of, and it's nice and dark in that room. Oh, for me, it's like plast plaster white. It's like exactly, there's no yeah. difference of shade there at all. That's, fa that's fascinating. I love, I love this kind of detail. Yeah, that's something like normal AO, if it's just looking for intersections of geometry and shading, it's not going to see the fact that that is actually underneath something at all. It's just going to... Oh, geez. Richard, you guys are, like, see-through. What's that about? Well, we're trying to transition to the next part of the level. Oh. Yeah, yeah. we have to wait for you, Alex, basically, <laughs> as usual. Yeah, that's the one thing that Source... Oh, wait, my depth buffer is wrong, by the way, and yours may be as well, no, too. No, mine's correct. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, mine looks fine. Okay, so um, the one thing that Source didn't improve so much so over Gold Source, I would always say, is, like, level loading while you're playing the single-player game. Yep, that's like, right. Like, it's... It's this not was a perfect. real problem back in the day, especially. 
Oh yeah. With, with mechanical hard drives and less memory, it was a real stutter fest. Yeah. So the whole game would sort of freeze and sound would stutter. <laughs> uh, or also, if you accidentally pushed backwards and then you would reload again, which is like the biggest. Pl- so who wants to pick up the cat? <laughs> well, that's what I'm, it looks like in third person. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I mean, how long before he gets irritated at us and uh, starts smacking us? It's like the way it's up? levitating. You're using the force to uh, to, to I mean, move the cat. Right. I have gravity gun hands, so I'm going to drop it in really quickly. One, two. Oh, yeah. Ooh, perfect. Well done. Um, but like I was saying earlier, I'm using a couple other like texture mods here. Like if John, oh, you're yeah. here to take a look at this, uh, like mine it's is a fairly bit, low res. Yeah, mine is a bit higher res, and I think the, I've selected a couple texture mods. Yeah, get, we need. It doesn't work, sadly. Um, I selected texture mods based upon how much I thought they adhered to the Half-Life 2 art style, which you know that. Uh, That's what key. Is this? Uh, his name, Victor Antonov, I think, was the uh, art design director for a lot of City 17's looks. Yeah, and a lot and he of did, everything. Um, Dishonored as well. Yeah, too, which you can totally see. I mean, uh, it's just kind of like in comparison to Doom 3, or I would say the best example is probably Fear or Far Cry in comparison that didn't have maybe as a contiguous art design. Like Half Life 2, all these years later, in spite of being probably technically inferior in a couple ways, uh, still looks absolutely gorgeous like this design of this kind yeah. of eastern well. european toll and uh train terminal is amazing looking oh gosh this so scene one is of am- my one of my favorite scenes actually yes this is a great scene but uh over here when you look under this bridge and everything i'm trying to find you there john oh yeah, yeah it's a real you. nice like you can see the subtle reflections in the distance you can see if you look under the uh this sort of like whatever you want to call it, this flap over the shop. The or something? Yeah, Yeah, perhaps. Uh, the RT adds depth behind it. It's a very natural sort of shadow that you normally wouldn't get. Uh, yeah, for me, I don't get any of that at all. This is more or less standard Half-Life 2 with a bit of admin occlusion, um, which helps, obviously, ground, because Half-Life 2, to talk about it, it doesn't have that much real-time lighting. We have, uh, with the update, flashlights and things like that and i guess when you fire a gun it spawns a very tiny little point light on your yep. character that only really affects your character uh but half-life 2 uh spent a lot of its uh budget and i would say it's rendering horsepower on this kind of baked indirect illumination that is or also direct illumination like a lot of the shadows here are all baked they're pretty low res these days to look at but you know you know there's only so much they could do with the background so- this is something I found in my original DF Retro video, actually, I believe. Yeah? If you come over here. Oh, is it the bug uh, from the 2007 update? Yeah, you look at look at the wheels of the car. Yeah, they're underground. The they intersect the ground, and they actually go through it. And there's there was something else as well about this. But yeah, this doesn't look correct. Yeah. This was added in the 2007 update, uh, where they tried to modify some of the visuals. It, That's well, one I'm... of many, whoa, <laughs> random little visual glitches. Richard just flew, like... 10 meters after that hit. <laughs> oh, this uh, was another thing I loved back in the day up here. These, uh, this oh, strange shader you used to, whatever you want to call it. It's like some sort of like weird energy field oh, up there at the top. That distorts the, the background. Frame yeah, buffer exactly. distortion is what I they always... Use this- I love that. They use that like like a just lot. to go back in time. Like we're playing the updated version of Half Life Two through this co op mod, so it has some of the the benefits of the 2007 update to it, and also some of the the negative side effects, like just some small bugs that occur. Um, but you know, back in the day, like I remember seeing that kind of shader effect for the first time when watching the E3 2003 videos showing oh, off yeah. Source. You know, they had like 20 some odd minute long demons. I'm um, getting photos taken of me by these bots um they had this like 20 odd minute long demonstration showing off like originally g-man talking to the camera and showing how much you know facial animation has changed over the years since the first game and also just how the game is driven now by DirectX 9.0 shader effects and a lot of them were based around normal mapping and kind of like changing you know like the the frame buffer in real time so that things could look transparent or like murky or like kind of depth of field looking all these kind of things to make you know different objects look like they have different material properties that's something that half-life 2 does i would argue much better than doom 3 oh Uh, big time uh, doom 3 has a lot of the problem where everything kind of looks very similar plasticky metal yeah they weren't they weren't attempting to innovate in that area yeah no focused on shadows and lighting yeah dynamic 
yeah, like this shadow right here, this is just, you know, like completely fake. It's just a drop shadow underneath the object, um, exactly. which Doom 3 would have it actually related to the light source behind it. But like Half-Life 2's advantage is the fact that it has this kind of like different material properties all over the world. And it has a very specific look um, ever since, I think, Gold Source, they're using something called like half Lambertian, I believe, is or half Lambertian uh, yeah. kind of surface representation, which makes everything look less harsh. The Half Life 2's lighting is doesn't have an extreme fall off. Everything always looks smooth gradients all over the place, and the way our characters are lit too. So they kind of have a like a little bit of a rim light going on with them. Um, That's true. Th we got. <laughs> We're just on, getting... on top of that, though, this, you know, just seeing this playground reminds me that Half-Life 2 kind of innovated when it came to interactive objects. Yeah, yeah, wait, let's, uh, just... like, and this is exactly. all multiplayer linked, too. This is, uh, exactly. We're doing this in real time over the link, which was, look at that. It's actually trying to balance there. And we could probably this actually is... get it to balance if we wanted. I'm sure. This... Yeah. Oh. It's hey. cool. uh, oh, oh. Richard's messing things up, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, just this <laughs> level of interactivity was extremely new at the time. Yeah. Uh, so many objects that are impacted by physics, you know, natural physics are applied. Uh, so yeah, it was focusing on sort of the materials and the shaders and physics, which is very different from what Doom 3 did. And also, you know, Far Cry had its own unique approach to different things as well. And they were <laughs> one of the first to introduce like a high dynamic range. Pipeline. Yeah, which was only added with the Half-Life 2 Lost Coast update later on. And, and exactly, I think also that was, it was also more like a halfway point because they didn't want to stop supporting DirectX 9.0B cards. So they used right. more like a MDR, that, not HDR, but like a yeah. middle dynamic range, almost like a mid dynamic range. Um, so so DirectX 9.0B cards, which is what I played Half-Life 2 on. Like I, back then, uh, before Half-Life 2 came out, I pre-ordered the game so I could play the Counter-Strike Source beta, and I didn't have my PC at that time, so I went over to a friend's house to check out what that would look like. And uh, then when I did play the game, I played on an X800 XT, Pentium 4, 3.4 gigahertz with hyper-threading, and one gigabyte of RAM. I remember that very much so. Um, it ran yeah, I, okay? I played it on two, I played it first on a uh, Radeon 9700 Pro, and then later, uh, I guess a couple months later, I got that laptop with the 6800 Go in it. Yeah, which that is was awesome. quite a bit faster, actually. So this was, you know, I was playing this on a laptop at 1680 by 1050, I think. This area should look really good with RT because it's so, like, confined space with all this red. You're probably getting yep. some nice bounce going around here. Exactly. You can see it here if a uh, digital foundry stuff's moving around for a second. <laughs> If you look at the at the floor and what it does to the wall and the box as I'm toggling it, you can see like sort of a red hue on everything. Is is it's the result of the light bouncing off of the red paint. So that's you know that's yeah. the resulting effect. And my, in comparison, when I turn it on and off with my AO, I'm not getting any of that. And also, you should notice if you look in the elevator shaft here, when it's disabled, you can see clearly through the elevator. It just looks improperly lit. Turn it on, and it goes. Very wow. dark. I would. I, Very I wish I knew what that looked like. <laughs> Here, hey, here's that sh the shader effects in action again on these doors. Oh yeah, yeah, where you can see through it. That's one of I the first uh, effects they showed off too in yep. uh, the in 2003 demo, demo in the demo room, which eventually turned it out being the the source benchmark. Like you could run source games. We could probably even show it here um, right now, like to get like your frame rate metrics to see how well source runs on your PC. Uh, and they eventually ended up repurposing that. But not everything from that 2003 demo was repurposed. They showed off like no. a docks location that never ended up in game. They, you know, they showed off the bug bait level. Um, this scene is always so cool. They showed off the bug bait level where they, you know, c commanding around the ant lines. But in that scene, they don't have the combine, you know, pulse rifle, but rather an OICW. A lot of things changed between Half-Life 2's beta and the full yeah. game, which John has a lot of experience with. He's he's played the beta before. Yeah, I've played with different versions of the beta and like messed around with different builds and such. And and yeah, you can do some neat things with it. It's cool to try to recreate what they did back then. Wow, what awesome. what does this scene look like for you? Because this is a cool area where the indirect lighting from outside is coming in and only yeah, it affecting looks much more natural with half the RT of, yeah. enabled. Yeah, for me, it's yeah, I'm not. It's there. kind of night and day if you will literally <laughs> yeah for, yeah with it off it's just like a, a grayish looking tone that's everything's evenly lit there's no shadow 
turn it on though and it it looks exactly as you'd expect a room bathed in just the faint glow from the outside world yeah and with ao i like it's situating the objects much better i would say with ambient mean, occlusion on but there's you know it's just more like an outline around them not necessarily based upon the brightness of pixels and so choosing i'm gonna put this, this dynamic light in here oh yeah it's dynamic because it is physics <laughs> 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 I mean, there's something to be said about uh, how long this is taking to get to action as maybe a critique of Half-Life 2's uh, longevity as a game. Uh, so Alex, did, did that texture pack fix this? If you come down here, look at this electrical plate. What do you guys think? Yeah, On mine a scale is... scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel about this texture? I can't even remember if mine's being affected by the texture pack, but it looks okay. <laughs> it's, it could it's be way not better. Bad. You know, it's fairly blurry, but it's not the worst. What yeah. do you think, Richard? Um, well, you know, it's not great, is it? <laughs> you know, by today's standards, I give it about a six. Yeah, like, the wall behind it is much worse, arguably. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. Well, yeah, it's not great. So, yeah. so I'm pretty sure that I'm getting an incorrect result here. I'm getting a lot of temporal shifting in, in the in the shading. Oh, yeah? Really? And, uh, yeah, and I had that glow effect from earlier. I think, I'm wondering whether it's because I've got the... HDR, the actual in-game HDR. Operating. No, I have that on as well. I have that on right. as well. Okay. Um, I was looking to turn it off, but um, it okay. says it will kick me from the game if I do. Oh, no. Okay, but guys. Yeah. Go, go stand in that other room where you just were, because the viewers have to see this. This this room right here with the ray tracing enabled, it's a dramatic shift. It's one of the best looking I've seen yet. Just look at all the shading and the and all the crevices and everything you expect with the bounce lighting from the clay tiles on the fireplace against the wall. It's so subtle, but it's so beautiful. And just the bookshelf there on the left, and like you're gonna love this, Alex, when you see it. In fact, <laughs> it's so good. I feel like you should turn on ray tracing yourself just to see Come what stand happens. Here and look at it, and then we will have your reactions live in this recording. So Let's see here. take my spot. I'm gonna stand out in the hall. Pretend I'm just, you know, I'm just hanging out. I'm going to watch you from afar. Oh, wow. That's a massive difference. Isn't that great? Sorry, I'm just geeking out over this because I, I love the way that looks. turn off MXAO as well because it's double applied. That, it's that fireplace, that subtle orange from the tile. Yeah, you don't even get any so of that. So natural. What a difference This reminds makes. me a lot of... You know, the funny thing is we got to talk about this because with Crisis... It was a good way to show off ray tracing in screen space using Pascal's shader here, which, by the way, support his Patreon. Really great work. Um, but the problem is Crisis has just like a generic ambient tone and shadow. It doesn't have any directionality to the lighting in shadow usually. So I can give more incorrect results. But for a game that already has a form of baked GI here where it's uh, this radiosity light maps that uh, Half-Life 2 uses, Places that are not, you know, that are already in shadow already have a sense of directionality to the pixels, you know, on those textures. That's right. And this just modifies that even more. There's like actual, like, I can't even believe this is way better than the results we would see most of the time in Crisis because there's real directionality to the, the baked lighting already as it is. Precisely. Um, yeah, it just, it, it really works well with what they've already created here and it feels natural. Whereas Crisis, you know, it was it was basically just like an enhanced AO, if you will, in terms of the way it looked, I feel, in general. Yeah, this is, uh, so that kind of, you know, it makes me wonder how it would apply to other games that use extreme amounts of baked lighting. Like, it would probably look really good in Rage, actually, too, which yeah, already actually, has, you know, like, a good one. baked lighting, but the character models are, like, com lit completely differently. So it would maybe make them more a part of the environment then. Wow, this just, is... Just quickly, uh, you see these two characters here on the sofa? The yeah. one with the, the, the woman face palming yeah. here? Yeah. That's that's kind of me at the moment. <laughs> it's because oh, uh, because um, uh, essentially we've, we've, we've talked about uh, a fireplace and visited a, t visited a toilet together. D digital you know foundry. We should, probably, we should probably see some action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's load up uh, the ant lion level where bug baiting actually occurs. That's a really cool looking level. What do you say, John? I want to see how the boat section is handled actually first. See ya, suckers. <laughs> well, John, so so we're back, and John is. Oh, we, we're at the wrong point. There are two. Oh, this is a bad idea, John. It's okay. Well, let's just. Should we I shoot these? 
<laughs> but, they, they've it's, actually spawned. Um, it spawned two. Each of us. I mean, there's, we have there's three of these things. Everybody, get your get your uh, yeah, whatever they call this thing. <laughs> oh my god, it keeps spawning in more. So yes, let's just go. Okay, so <laughs> follow, follow me. Tell me when you have your lead the pack. Um, is, oh wait. <laughs> Did I but yeah, so this I mean, level is kind of cool. I always was super impressed. I, think I went the wrong way. <laughs> I'm always super impressed with the uh, the water reflections in Half Life 2, which you know, obviously like a kind of doubling of geometry kind of technique where you can choose which yeah, things are added like into the reflection. Planar reflections. Planar reflections. Yeah. Where you're such, yeah, exactly. It's like redrawing the scene in there. Uh, my my GPU doesn't seem to be clocking up per really well, so I'm getting some frame drops oca occasionally here. That are not too pretty, but darn does this not look. I'm I'm just running with oh, no, MXA on. You died. You I died. Got, I got hit by too much stuff. <laughs> what happens when you die? Well, now I now I'm spectating you guys. Oh no! So this is this is actually a good test. Let's let's see what yeah. happens. Yeah. So for me, like I'm obviously. Oh, I'm back. Okay, good. Oh, I'm back at the beginning of the level. Great. But did it respawn a, a hoverboat for you? Uh, yeah, I got one. Whatever they call these things, hovercraft. Um. Yeah, the water was a big part of this, though, at the time. Uh, and it's it's kind of funny to look back at how, like, um, Gordon Freeman is just, like, a floating camera. <laughs> and, like, you, you pilot the hoverboat. Like, it's an interesting stylistic choice. They don't even try to draw the arms. No, it's, like, it's very much the taking out of, like, the kind of Gold Source library of how to, like, do interactions with the environment. Where in Gold Source, they would have, like, weapons and stuff, like, weapon emplacements. Oh, this area would look really good, actually, with... RT on. John, you should get up to us. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah. It's, uh, we can just hide from the, the, the gunships for a second here. But, uh, you know, like, Half-Life 2 has really cool interactions, but it doesn't have anything that you would see, like, later with, like, the Crisis games. Or I would say more like Fear, where Fear has your character, okay, I'm here. you know, actually touching things. What does this look like with RT on and off? I'm not seeing a huge amount of difference, uh, to be honest. Oh, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have done that. Are you burning to death, John? I can't stand with that. No, no. But uh, is it working for you here? How does it look? Wait, like? where are you? I'm ahead of you. I've just died. I accidentally got out of the. Oh. <laughs> out of the what does this look uh, like? It's, <laughs> it doesn't actually benefit that much. Uh, you can see that there's problems of the shadow maps that are applied through the light maps this leak this through all, pretty yeah. often. Uh, there is a mod, I forget the name of it, I'll put a link up for it right here, that kind of changes the light maps in Half-Life 2 to be more accurate. Uh, and it's a really awesome mod. I've tried it out a couple times. Oh, I'm seeing a glitch with the uh, bump map reflection thing. Oh yeah? Just on the on the, the halo from this tunnel here. <laughs> yeah, for me with MXAO just on it, it only looks okay. But what, you know, every good reshade video needs a bunch of bloom. So I'm gonna turn on some bloom. Oh yeah. Uh, using a bit more, I would say, Half-Life 2 Episode 2 style bloom here, which did have bloom. Uh, it kind of has the effect in Half-Life 2 where it says, use when available. Uh, and it doesn't really actually seem to apply to most scenes. By the way, this section kind of sucks in co-op. <laughs> yeah, it it's like, I mean, there's Half-Life 2 was a game not designed around co-op at all. It was not at all. So, like here, I'm trying to just get up. It's nothing. Nothing. Okay, waiting for team. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, this may that, take that'll second. be me, which because I seem to have gone in completely the wrong direction. Uh, I should get there, but otherwise it will change the level in 34 seconds. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good, yeah. thank you. Well, yeah. I can't give you my license, Officer John Freeman said. <laughs> Why not? Said the head crab officer back to John Freeman. <laughs> because you are head crab zombie. So John Freeman shot the officer in the head and drove off, thinking, "My brother is in trouble there." And went faster. <laughs> <laughs> is this your uh, dramatic reading? This oh, is uh, Half Life Two because of its like through uh, Gary's <laughs> mod, G mod, and through the fact that you could just kind of line up limps, li line up lip syncing so well with its uh, character voice implementation. Uh, you could get amazing videos, like some like really famous music yes. videos in Half Life Two that everyone's I hope seen this day, like uh, that one that uses that Breaking Benjamin song or whatever, um, or just you know John Freeman. Is it going to spawn some more boats? I'm going to take this one. Yeah. Um, That's right. We should probably take a trip over to Ravenholm because... Oh, no. Yeah. It's very deadly. You just died. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just to let you know, John, you died. 
Um, we should take a trip over on over to Ravenholm or something like that. Yeah, maybe let's go to Ravenholm yeah, next. Because yeah. I, you know, this is, whoa. Richard just he kept driving down the road. <laughs> okay. I've got to say, there isn't a huge benefit to ray tracing on this uh, on this stage. No, yeah, it's kind of, I agree. Yeah, it's it just not... a bit more shade on foliage from what I'm seeing at the moment. Yeah, and some, there's not know, a lot of occlusion here. This is just very barren, you know, and that's exactly. where it would not work as well. So let's switch over to Ravenholm where you can see it a bit more. We are back now. We should all have flashlights, which is really cool. This is something that the, uh, you know, the Half-Life 2 update in 2000. 7 added where the original Half-Life 2 did have a flashlight, but it did not cast shadows. These really nice, really good. Yeah, it was a nice evolution in the sense that, you know, Half-Life 1 used per-vertex lighting, yeah. which looked rather chunky. And then Half-Life 2 added a per-pixel flashlight beam. And then, of course, the 2007 update added shadows. Yeah, which looks really which good. still look pretty good, actually. Yeah, this level, pro like, for me, I also turned on, like, a fake HDR effect, a tint, and trying to think of what else that's really about it but like kind of just enhancing the colory moody atmosphere of this level which probably without ray tracing on like i have right now is a bit lackluster in 2019 it probably looks way better on your rig yeah no muzzle flash shadows alex no sadly not actually like can you fire again rich yeah you can see how it doesn't light up the area around rich but just like his character model do i do damage to you when i shoot you in the groin <laughs> No. no, I'm playing. I'm playing around with some magic DOF. Yeah, just because it's uh, it doesn't really work very well D by default. You got to tweak it. Yeah, uh, but at times you can get some pretty nifty results. Uh, Half Life is also a horror game. No one can forget that. Um, this looks, oh, right, yeah, that looks pretty great. You know, after that, you know that gunboat chase section. <laughs> It's hard That's to true. <laughs> like, well, that was one of the strengths of Half Life, though, is the fact that there was so much variety in terms of uh, yeah, right, the types of scenarios you would encounter. Like, th what they've built here in Ravenholm is basically a different game than what we just experienced, right? Yeah, it's pretty much 100 percent different. The, the enemy types, like originally when they showed off Ravenholm, it actually had both zombies and combine in it. Uh, That's right. They got rid of the combine. Um, completely for all I know. I don't remember any combine at all uh, now I with this version right. of the game, but it also switches up. I'm pretty sure at this point you don't actually have much ammo or any guns at all in the real single player campaign. No, so you're, you, this, you rely on the the, the, uh, gravity, the gravity gun and a lot of the, the environmental traps, which they also but, showed off a great deal of in the E3 2003 wait. video. Oh gosh, let's get a double kill if I, here if I can. This was famously Ravenholm in the E3 de 2003 demo is where they had the push the the laundry machine in front of the door, remember? Yeah, which is not in the game. And they tried to bust right? through, and then, like, you go up the steps, and there's bullets coming through the windows, hitting the blind. Like, a lot of cool stuff that didn't come to pass in the final game. <laughs> this is just insanity. Um, <laughs> yeah, just like Raven Home I'm almost dead here just through blowing barrels up indiscriminately. That will happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, this is, I love this thing. This would look great with the accumulation blur. Uh, you know, I can try and turn it. Nah, I don't. I can't. Yeah, but but basically, I commented on my reshade video. Uh, maybe I'll add in a bit post here of me showing this exact same scene in Half Life Two with accumulation blur on. But you can add in a really awesome accumulation blur from uh, a modder named Shoulder, and I also uh, modified that too with a basic motion blur on top, which kind of blurs it. Uh, by uh, a person online named Blue Sky Knight or Blue Sky Defender, and makes this look like that, which obviously spinning looks kind of like a modern project blur. Uh, it requires an extremely high frame rate, like above 300 FPS, I would say, to look plausible, but darn, does that not look good? So, yeah, the ray tracing in this section, it's a little subtle, but. Um, so the main thing is the spotlight behind you up there in the corner. Oh, yeah? Has, casts a nice green hue around the ground. It sort of bounces off the walls a little more naturally. Yeah. You know, just some some additional depth to the shading. Oh, wait. It's an improvement, but not... By the way. It, it really does seem, seem to vary by area. Check this What's out. Up? Oh, yeah, we'll check this out. Richard, what you got? What do I go at what? <laughs> go up to the wall and hit... T. T. Go off to the wall? What? Yeah. Go off to, to the, the wall, wall and hit T. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Wait there a minute. Go. Oh, because you added that to the account. Oh, it does it per account. Yeah, I tried to... On mine, I actually... I initially tried to add the alpha, alpha channel there, but because I designed the logo with the bloom mm -hmm. there, 
It would have taken more effort than I was willing to put in. You so. know, this is... I just put a big black square. This is one <laughs> leftover from the gold source days that I'm just so in love with always. Obviously, like, just modifying the environment, putting in a decal. Uh, you know, that was obviously since the gold source days of the engine where you can do it in Counter-Strike pretty famously. Uh, and that it's still here in 2019. No other game really does that kind of thing. Let's try and not die, by the way. That looks like it would do a lot of damage. <laughs> it does. Uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. Well... Oh no! Oh, the, the paint can is causing bounce lighting to appear. Is it? Oh, see, for me, I'm yeah. not getting any of that. Oh, yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm getting. The lighting I've got, is very subtle. I've got here. a yeah, yeah. But darn, that looks great. Soul blade. So does the flashlight actually have any impact on the ray tracing? Yeah, it should because it is a directional uh, like color change. Like for example, wait, actually, let's try that out. Let's do it in the corner over here. Um, John, like in this very dark corner, shine your flashlight. Yeah. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I just, <laughs> what happened there is I shot a barrel, uh, which hit me in the face. Okay, so like, I'm gonna <laughs> turn off a bunch of other things other than uh, the RT. Uh, MXAO, active to top. Uh, yeah, you, saw, you shine your light in the corner, Alex. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn off everything. It's vanilla Half-Life 2, basically. Okay. Okay, and then you can turn it on and off and see if it is affecting... It should, because the normal maps and everything are like this are also being affected by it. It should. It does. The That light is causing a, sort of a reddish hue. To bounce around elsewhere? A little bit. Uh, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not super dramatic. C can you increase the IL level just to, to see what happens when you do that? Yeah, let's try that actually. Yeah, because uh, you know, because yeah, we've custom we've customized this to prevent an overly bloomy look. Yeah, if you will. So I will try turning this. You know, because you can have independent control of how intense the I mean occlusion style effect is, and Here, also I'm going to switch to the debug view as well, so you we see how that impacts. Then move your flashlight around in the debug view. Hmm, that's very interesting looking. There's, there's definitely, it, it does, it does seem to work. Yes. Cool. And it's, it's lagged behind your actual movement in the debug view yeah. because it's updating, obviously. So it looks very strange. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play in this view a little bit longer, yeah. just because you know it's fascinating to see Ravenholm lit in this way. Yeah, let's advance forward a bit. One thing that should be pretty interesting to see is see what uh, particle effects look like in that debug view, like if they're counted as part of the depth buffer geometry. I, I'm curious. There's a lot of explosive Ooh. zombies. There is. Uh, you know, always super creepy. I think it's like backwards text, uh, backwards uh, audio files being played from the zombies or something like that. Aren't they saying like, help me? Yeah, man, this really reveals just how simple the level geometry can be. Oh, it's not too bad there, but... Oh, Father Gregory. I mean, the, this thing that this mod does really well is lining up all the scripted events across the server. Uh, yeah. We had a bit more problem with the Crisis Co-op mod because it was obviously abandoned and yep. completely non-native. So this looks interesting in the debug view, the flames. Oh, yeah? What do they look like? Uh, it's hard to explain, but you can... It's... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of ammo. <laughs> boom boom. Nice. I have no crosshair in this mode, so I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fire. turn on the depth buffer to see what that looks like right now. Uh, depth. This serves as having us show different things on the screen at the same time. Kind of. It's kind of an interesting way to showcase yeah. differences in the visuals. With the depth buffer on, I do not see at all any of uh, the flames at all. It's just, you know, representing the geometry that is not uh, transparent. And it's actually super dark. I'm pretty sure YouTube is going to destroy this. So let's turn that back <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, but you can also turn on uh, the, the normal map, which uh, is World Space Normals, which is something that I said incorrectly in the wrong, uh, the last video. So forgive me for that. But this also looks really cool because you can see just basically what uh, kind of how lighting is interpreted on, on the surface level and how it knows how to shade. 
which is pretty awesome. It could be a bit reversed right now. Uh, I think we may be using reversed. No, wait, no, we're not. But uh, yeah, this looks awesome. The world, the world lighting here is just completely different when you swap between. This them. is definitely like if you look at John right here and he looks at me, like the difference between our views. You can see how dense the facial mesh is actually in a Half Life Two character, which it's for true. its time was um, like if you go over here to Doom Three, see what that looks like. Pretty big difference. Half Life Two is. Uh, a handsome looking game in terms of its character models. Absolutely. Yeah. My goodness, look at that. Well, there's lots of zombies here. <laughs> yeah. Bring it oh. on. Wow, they look great. Yeah. The shading on them. The, the mine look awesome too, honestly. I'm throwing a grenade, be careful. <laughs> the way he just explodes. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, this is actually like. RGB city, this is beautiful. Nice normals. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta turn that off. Yeah, yeah, I can't even see what that looks like. I would have done the same thing. Oh wow, with uh, this must look cool with AOIL on John. Actually, I'm gonna do that right now too. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, run quite a bit differently on my machine. What's your take on all this, Richard, so far? What are you seeing? Um, essentially a hugely improved uh, shading solution, uh, you know, ambient occlusion where there kind of really wasn't any. Yeah. It's quite in interesting that the outdoor scene that we saw last time didn't actually have uh, much, if any, improved. Well, it did. It was improved, obviously, but not enough for me to change my frame rate from 290 frames per second to uh, 60. Yeah, like it's going <laughs> to depend upon scene to scene how effective it is probably and like it can't like if there's already problems with the game and the way it's rendering like right here I can see the specularity through the wall. So the the RT is going to pick up on that a bit, you know, it can't do much about that. Uh, yeah, one thing we should point out is that um, we are using, a pro well, or certainly John and I are using a preposterously high level of rays per pixel. Yeah, I'm using three. That's true. And it, it still holds so, up on three, though. Like, uh, Pascal's improved the shader to be much more temporarily stable on lower um, ray, ray level. But uh, still, I'm like, with uh, double buffered V-Sync, it's dropping below 60 pretty often, actually. Right. GTX 1060. <laughs> well, the thing is, if I if I was using three rays per pixel like you, I could easily be running this uh, well beyond 60 frames per second at 1440p. Yeah. Uh, which isn't bad for the Radeon 7. And um, but yeah, obviously there would be a hit to performance, but I'm not um, sorry, a hit to quality. Uh, but I'm not sure it would be a massive downgrade here because fundamentally it is still past faced global illumination. That's right. And gentlemen, do, what do you think? Should we move on to the next area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, here we are. Yeah, this is this area looks excellent, I think. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Okay, so... And again, you get a pretty good uh, difference A to B comparison here. Yeah, like if you... Uh, like, I think one of the cool things, like I was talking about the strong directionality of lighting due to the radiosity yeah. here. When you look at the light coming through here, through this window, Hitting here, Half-Life 2 has like a rudimentary bounce from that. But if you turn on, you know, ray tracing, it just enhances it so much so, adding that color. And you can see the exact kind of area light looking surface to the bounce. It's a uh, it's true. It's I, I was difference. actually really partial of this area over here. Yeah, there's some combines. The well, first we got to take out the combine. Darn combine, always messing up Gordon F Freeman's plans. Those pesky combines. So this area here, if you stand, I'm gonna do it right here. So, yeah, this has a lot of subtle bounce lighting and shading and everything. So if I toggle this off, well, first let me switch to the pistol. We'll do this, and then you can see it's sort of the big difference it creates. And this is actually where I kind of dialed in some of the settings a little bit to prevent the blooming. So if I come back in here and do indirect lighting intensity, I sort of dialed that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it looks a little more natural. Yeah, let me so let me get into your uh, point yeah. too. I'm not, so like also like mine's having a bit of a hard time. These ant lions are really annoying, you know. Don't. Oh. <laughs> Who's a good boy? <laughs> yeah, let's desecrate his corpse. Um, uh, no, um, <laughs> you do, you do uh, know. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> you gotta watch out. Abuse, abuse to animals is a sign of a psychopath. <laughs> yes. um, 
like I'm that's also using uh, a bit of bloom on top, uh, so that's why it looks a bit bloomier in my view. But I kind of don't mind the the, the effect of bloom in Half Life Two. I think it's okay looking. Uh, yes. I kind of I'm out of my bloom phase. Are you? So. <laughs> it, was, it was a thing for a while. Yeah, here we are. Now we're now we're in the AOIL view. Yeah. And you can really sort of see the impact of the, of the lights. The one thing that you guys uh, probably on YouTube won't be able to see is that I'm using a lower rate per count per pixel. So when I move around a bit, those areas of highest contrast show a bit like here. Like if I move around, you can see it actually breaking down a bit and turning into the constituent like D, like non-denoised look, that raw kind of ray traced look. Um, I don't know if you see that as well, John, if you look around this light Where you? and move like right here. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you see it a bit? I can see that as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yours will be much better looking just because the rate per pixel is so much higher. But uh, yeah, this this next Whoa. scene is the you know very famous bug bait video that came around E3 2003 where it shows, oh, you can command the ant lines and use them as a distraction. By the way, be very careful, there's a trip mine in that room. Oh yeah. It's, it, it it's not gonna work. Whoops. Are you alive? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> not very though. Uh, yeah. That, that did some damage. But like here you should be able to it's see like, like, just the, the light oh, yeah, bouncing. The laundromat area. Yeah, the laundromat, area yeah. I, I, yeah, this is an area where there should be a Oops. really big difference with RT on and off. But first we have to kill these combine. Let's do this. Yeah, my life, I got killed because my life was low due to the exploding barrel. You know? Here we go. We're not very good at this. And I'm, I'm getting some pretty drop frames here <laughs> with ray tracing on. It's pretty good for me. Yeah, I'm in the uh, high 50s, early 60s. Okay, so you are even on the Radeon 7 are a bit below 60 at times. Yeah, it's all good for me. Wow, there's a lot of guys here. Yeah, I think it may be a bit ramped up for the... the You're also part. supposed to really Oops. be using the ant lines. Yeah, which, which we are not. Fine. Which has got a kill for me. <laughs> That's this, you know, Gordon Freeman, PhD in, oh, like, wow, I went down again. experimental <laughs> physics, and... Uh... Oh, so much things. Oh, I'm back. Oh, they're all dead. Yeah, now let's just take a look really quickly at, uh, like, what it does to um, the area around this laundra laundromat washing machine. Like... Yeah, it's it's a pretty big difference uh, if you look under the like the underside of this. Like Half Life Two's radiosity is doing a pretty good job, but that extra layer of indirect lighting from the RT is just masterful on top. Yeah, it's completely different. I'm I am curious though why it is a bit greener. I'm wondering if there's something going on with the the, the HDR that Half Life. Two uses yeah. that is messing up the color, but it's very, it is very it's green. Very green. I don't know if it is actually that green, uh, but but again, that's just a limitation of this type of solution here. Like, yeah, it just like increases the indirect shadows. Ooh, <laughs> masterful looking. But yeah, I guess I can go nuts with the additional SSR. Cause why not? I mean, there we go. Man, that's so much SSR. <laughs> I've never seen so much SSR in my da life. Dat SSR. <laughs> I'm going to um, SSR. reduce my rate count because uh, I'm pretty sure I can get to 1440p with 60 frames per second or higher if we're a bit more sensible with rays. So let's have a quick look at that. So I've got 16. I'm going to I'm going to move it down to eight yeah. and see what happens and see what happens to performance generally. And then we'll see about resolutions. So, yeah, I'm already, you know, <laughs> I'm up to a hundred frames per second now with ray tracing. Uh, with our, yeah, with ray tracing enabled, still pretty decent change in uh, quality uh, when you turn it on and off. I mean, it looks pretty awesome, I've got to say. So, you know, if we're getting this effect from a post-process filter. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing that new Quake 2 from NVIDIA that actually yes. uses hardware acceleration to, to path trace everything. They also are like redesigning the lighting for each level too so that it actually shows it off really, really well. I, ca I can't wait to see it exactly. as well. Uh, I would love to see more, you know, Ray mastered games as people are starting to say. Um, <laughs> I know it's such a terrible 
pun, but that's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of combine here. Don't want to die. Um, but yeah, like that's one I would love to see. I would love to see maybe Doom Three because it has such you know you know dramatic lighting as is, and seeing it that game with actual real light bounce would just be impressive. Uh, that would be amazing, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the the rays per pixel thing didn't work out for me with eight. I'm on about forty five frames per you second. You can turn it down at, to three. At fourteen forty p. See what happens. Um. Yeah. 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 Uh, hold on a minute. I guess we should probably check out one more. Yeah. Area yeah. Let's then. check out like the Citadel, the last Citadel area. All right. I agree. So we're back, and now we're in the Citadel. Uh. Well, at least the, the you know the opening structure of the citadel i'm not even sure if they kept that lore that the citadel is like a moving structure kind of like eating the city over time did they yeah is that, is that still in the final I game actually get a little bit of a little bit of dip oh there. no yeah same here first I've actually moved first down person platforming by the way is something i love because i love to rock but um this sucks this this just sucks first person platforming in a game like this this sucks that's not that bad <laughs> I, I feel so I don't know. I, maybe it's just the source thing, but I feel like I'm sliding on surfaces a lot more. It's true. It does feel that way. Um, I can't respawn. How long did it take to res How long did it take to respawn? Oh, cool. There we are. Nice. It moved uh, moved me with you, so I don't have to do that terrible first person platforming section. Um, wow, SSR here looks. Cool. I gotta turn that on. <laughs> Let me turn that on. Except for your uh, crosshair sort of appears in it. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That looks neat. That does look cool, excluding, you know, obviously the fact that it <laughs> shows people's names and stuff like that in the SSI. Yeah, but what are you going to yeah. do? <laughs> this reminds me a bit of like a Forerunner structure. I mean, I don't know how. I think I'm going to switch the dip. Uh, look at just the debug view. See how this looks. Pretty cool. Actually, it, my frame rate is kind of dipping in the debug view. You know, here we are trying to navigate the most simplistic maze ever, and we're failing. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, like, I just died. It's like we're trying to put like the the, the, the triangle looking uh, thing into like the, the the round square one. Not very good at this, are we? Oh, is that where we go down? Yeah, down here. This game at 30 FPS feels pretty bad with a mouse. Wait, what? 30 yeah, FPS? Yeah, it's because I have RT on and, you know, it, uh, it um, with double buffered V-Sync, it kind of drops my frame rate down to 30. It would, it, it, hey, if you played it on Xbox or PS3, you yep. know, if you played on Xbox, you get 30 FPS with bad frame pacing. If you played on PS3, you get like 20 FPS. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you get MSAA, don't you? On, uh, on yeah. 360? That's, that's pretty cool. This uh, reminds me of Prey, actually. If you that's right. remember Prey. Beginning to... Or more like Prey reminds me of this. Yeah. Oh. Or wait. Okay. <laughs> you know what? That, I just think that means we need more games that have Native American protagonists that kill aliens. I just just throwing that out there. We need another Turok. Sounds okay to me. Oh wait, were we even supposed to go over here? No, I think we're supposed to get inside. Aren't we supposed to get inside these and ride oh, the ride? Oh yeah. Jeez. Like, how, I wonder how they solved this for uh, co-op. Oh, I fell off the level. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> This is where the same thing happens to me, uh, just to... Oh, go, so it does show an animation of you getting in. Um, That's that cool. is actually really cool. I wonder what happens. Will it spawn me in Oh, you should, you should do it and then uh, don't touch the mouse. And I'm in the debug view. If you choose a different view, you should be able to get synchronized camera view. Here. Oh, yeah? And then compare. Yeah, yeah, wait one second. I'm going to have to wait to get in. It spawned me at oh, a I very inopportune oh, area. No, I, I'm... I'm dead for some reason. You have to hit F or E? Is it E? E. I'm thinking of Crisis e. for some reason. Okay, come on. Oh, that is a really cool view. How did you die? I don't know, it just killed me. Oh no. Is this some sort of yeah, like Rube Goldberg well. machine that just kills people? <laughs> you get to the end. There's a um there's there's like an electrical bolt that comes down and strikes you down. So you're supposed to get out before that happens, I think. Oh I, I assume so, yeah. Oh no wait, we're loading oh. to the next area. Uh Alex survived. So somebody rescued us from that tedium. Oh, wait. It's only gonna get more tedious. This area exists uh in I would say the less fun parts of Half Life are sometimes when you're just taken along for a ride. 
Uh, at least they're bad for replays. They're really great the first time you play the game, obviously, because you're like seeing this new world. Wait, I've been. I think you're controlling the mouse. Yeah. It's very choppy looking. <laughs> oh, really? This is interesting. Look up. I mean, yeah, like, because mine's updating at 30 FPS. What does it look like now? Look down. It's very jerky. It's still jerky? Okay. Doesn't well, like I'm getting bad performance as well. 55, 45 yeah. frames per second. Uh, I'm locked to 60, but the, the camera motion is very choppy. Interesting. Yeah, so you guys are just following me because... Now, this is just a... I, this area, I love the look of it. It would look really good with uh, that per-optic blur, actually, that I had. It, this actually... Um, you can see how in creating Dishonored's artwork that there was, you know... This really reminds me of what Dishonored would become. Yeah, right? Uh, a lot of things here that I don't think you end up shooting, like these kind of debased slave models. They used to be an enemy type, uh, I think in the beta version of Half-Life 2. Uh, but now they're just like kind of like in the environment. That's right. Oh, the Strider's walking. Gosh, this is amazing looking. Yeah, Half-Life 2 is just a, you know... It's, a, it's not a perfect game, I would say, but it's a, it's a, it's a very yeah, effective Alex, one. You stop can you stop moving your mouse Oh, yeah, around? sure. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> On my screen, it looks good. Every time you do that, it looks terrible. <laughs> okay, well, just follow... Uh... Alex, what's happened to your super loud keyboard? Um, I'm using a different PC this time, so... Right, okay. Because <laughs> one of my vectors for potential comedy has been poorly denied. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just have to make it loud. The RT isn't really doing a lot here. I don't have it on um, because it's 30 FPS and looks terrible with uh, 30 FPS uh, view. Okay. But, um, so 1440p, I'm at 290. So, uh, yeah, you can see I'm CPU bound. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one core is at 90, 89% there. That says a lot, though, for being a 4.7 gigahertz 8700K, you know, like that it's CPU bound. Yeah. It's nuts. My GPU is at 8%, 9%. Oh, wait, there we go. Now it's back up. <laughs> I had toggled off reshade briefly. Now it's way back up. It looks good, though. It's still running in lock 60, though. Yeah. Do we get off here? So, yeah, guys, I think this is... Um, end of the line. End of the line for, for us and probably this video. <laughs> Just as we get to that awesome section where uh, Gordon Freeman goes ham with the super gravity gun. Uh, I think it's right here, actually, where you get it. And I'm spawned inside oh, yeah. of you guys. This is not good. Oh, no. <laughs> that physics oh, no, experiment gone wrong. We have become <laughs> one. <laughs> no. We are, we are, we are. Yeah. The many. We are legion. There we, there we go. So we get the super gravity gun, and let's kill some fools. Um, but as we are killing Wait, fools. Richard. Did you run away without the gravity gun? You gotta use it. I haven't got a gravity gun. Is there only a gun? Yeah, go back to that room and pick one up. Um, but as we do this, and you know, Breen talks to us and tells us how we've been a bad test subject, etc. Um, we're gonna end this video, and we're gonna thank you for watching it, of course. Um, yes, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, congratulations. You win. <laughs> you win nothing. Except knowledge. But uh, I would suggest, <laughs> well, at the end of this video, to support Pascal Grisha on his Patreon, and to check out Reshade for yourself in old games, especially with this Ray Trace shader. Uh, it's really awesome, and we've been super impressed with the results. Um, if you did like, happen to like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, well, hit that little bell button to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. And if you want to talk to us about ray tracing and screen space, well, write a comment below or follow us on Twitter, John, Richard, and I. And as always, this is John, Alex, and Richard signing off. Auf Wiedersehen! <laughs>